everybody, and I'll welcome back to another exciting episode of a 52-week movie challenge. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and uh, today we have an excellent, excellent, excellent show for you guys. Um, so first off, let's talk about how this week we're go- I'm going to be talking about the, uh, it's week seven, and it is a stop motion film I had to choose. So I decided, and for this thing, I decided Frankenweenie would be the uh, first one up. Uh, so Frankenweenie, which was released in 2012, uh, my date challenge accepted was 2 14 22, uh, Valentine's Day. Yes, I decided to watch Frankenweenie on Valentine's Day, which actually is a pretty good idea. I might do that more often. Uh, aspect ratio is 1.331. Runtime is an hour and 27 minutes. Uh, genre is animation, uh, rated PG. Starring Catherine O'Hara, Martin Short, Winona Ryder, and Martin Landau. Um, I forgot the kid's name. We'll probably get into that later. Directed by Tim Burton, produced by Tim Burton, and written by John August. Uh, music by Danny Elfman. It's won many awards, including the Saturn Awards. The BSC, BSCF Award and LAFCA Award. Uh, why I choose this particular film? Because it was fun. It looked fun. Um, have you seen this movie before? Nope. Uh, would you recommend this film? Why or why not? Yes. I just enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed the story and I I think everyone will. If you like dogs, if, you like, if you've ever had a pet period that you've loved, uh and wish that they didn't die you know and wish you could bring them back sort of like pet cemetery it's sort of one of those things cautionary tales where you know um and we'll, we'll get into that we'll get into that um which character were you most able to identify and connect with uh in what way uh with in what way uh none really i mean a lot of them like science i'm not really that into science i was more into watching them do and get excited about the science didn't really care about it as much um best line or memorable quote i said i just want him in my heart i want him here with me or i don't want him in my heart i want him here with me and i can connect with that you know whenever i've had a dog or cat die people are always like well he'll always be in your heart i'm like well i fucking want him here you know that i don't want him in my heart i want to be cuddling him right now so it, it gave me more, um, you know, all these type of movies give me more love for my animals. Uh, what do you think of stop motion was chosen for this film uh, rather than animation? Oh, hold on. Wait, what was I? Was I surprised by the ending? What would I have done different? I was pretty surprised by the ending. Um, but in, you know, in the same time, really enjoyed the ending, really loved it. Uh, I wouldn't have done anything different. Why do you think st- stop motion was chosen for this film rather than animation? Well, I don't think this story would have been told as well with live action. It's my opinion. Just just the way that it was shot, the way that it looked, everything. I don't think it... it I mean, I guess they could make a live action. They did a live action short of this, and that's what inspired this. But um, no, I, I don't know uh anything else i'd like to say yes i wish uh we got more with winona Ryder. that was my only complaint we'll get into that but i give it a five star rating uh mainly because i just i really enjoyed the movie just thought it was cute uh it was a lot of fun um i liked frank and weenie himself the little dog uh well as well he was sparky the little dog um in the uh, actual Frankenweenie short, he was a wiener dog. And this, I don't really quite know what kind of dog he was. He was not a wiener dog. So having him called Frankenweenie didn't make as much sense. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering why they decided not to do that. Um, I would love to have one day own this on like Blu-ray and maybe get like the, uh, you know, commentary and stuff because... This is a movie that I would like to hear more about why they did certain things, but differently than the short and stuff. But I mean, I can understand it's a feature. So a lot of the short was maybe in it, but a lot of the 
lot more was was added to produce and i like the ending with the big animals the big creatures getting made and and then they have to figure out how to stop it and then the cat who is so annoying from the very beginning becomes like the lead the villain at the end really the bat cat which i thought was pretty cool um all in all i i really really freaking enjoyed this movie um from start to finish it kept my attention it made me um like once again it made me appreciate what i have right now and understand like that you know we just we, sometimes we just don't do that sometimes we're just thinking about what we're doing right now we're not thinking about the people in our lives and and then things and so uh it, it's funny i do spend a lot of time alone or something when i should be out with people that you know i i may not ever see again or something you know that kind of thing um you know, there's this big question of whether or not I would bring back my animals and, and stuff. And yes, I mean, if, if they were just like Sparky, where there really wasn't, you know, I mean, other than their tails falling off or whatever, like nothing bad came from it. Like they didn't become evil or something. Uh, yeah. That was the thing with pet cemeteries. They got to bring back the, the animals in pet cemetery, but they were evil. You know, they were bad. And so, you know, that line of sometimes dead is better or whatever, uh, you know, so it, it makes sense. But for this, the dog was like happy, you know, happy dog. And by the end of it, when they bring him back to life, I was happy again. And so was the parents. The parents at first were just confused and they were angry about him doing that because like that's just tampering with something you shouldn't probably tamper with. Uh, and then they learned like that others shouldn't tamper with it too. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I don't understand what the difference was, what made it, I guess he got the formula a little wrong. That's why all the animals became like different and big or, you know, crazy or, I mean, Shelly, the turtle was obviously named after um, Mary Shelley. And there was a lot of great references to all the other uh, Frankenstein, obviously. Then there was Igor, which was uh Edgar, Igor, you know, um, whatever. Um, there was, you know, Elsa Van Helsing. Now, once again, I my, my biggest complaint, and that did not stop me from the five stars, was that Winona Ryder was in it and she played this character that sort of had a, a big part to it, but sort of didn't. Um, I, I was just sort of confused as to why, you know, I thought she might end up being like the love interest kind of thing. But really, she's just another girl that, you know, happened to be living next door that happened to have all this stuff happen to her and everything. And then she sang and I was like, I'm pretty darn sure that's not Winona Ryder's voice. But uh, all the rest was. And Catherine O'Hara did like three voices. Martin Short did three voices. It was just fantastic. Um, and then Martin Landau, when I heard him, I was like, that's Martin Landau. That's got to be. That sounded very Bella Lugosi-like um, from Ed Wood. And Ed Wood, if everybody knows, is my favorite movie of all time. So the fact that I haven't seen this and it and stars a bunch of people from Beetlejuice and Ed Wood and movies from Tim Burton that I really, really love, um, I'm, you know, I'm shocked um, that I hadn't seen it yet. But I hadn't. So I was like, that's stop motion animated movie. I might as well watch it. And I'm very happy I did. And it's a movie I'm going to watch more and more. And, you know, something I'm going to keep doing. and. If uh, you are a big fan of Tim Burton, I suggest this movie. If you like those cute little things like Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline and whatever, this is kind of similar to that. Um, except it's a, to me, it's just a cute fucking story. Um, I kind of wish they did like a um, Frank and Weenie 2 or something, but I, I don't know what they would do, but just explore more of those. Like maybe there would be a Jekyll or something in there or whatever. It's just those kind of cool things that they did with the with the literature and with these characters explore more of Elsa Van Helsing. Like she has the name Van Helsing, but she doesn't do anything. You know, it's kind of funny that she gets attacked by a bat cat, but because her last name is Van Helsing, but like, it's not like a vampire thingy. I don't know. It's weird. I, 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 I didn't get that. So that was the only thing I, I didn't get and didn't like. And I almost felt like, a Wino writer uh, didn't feel like a Winona writer, you know, or whatever his voice. So it almost felt like anybody could have done that voice. And the fact that she was sort of playing like her character, a similar character to her character in, uh, as Lydia and, um, and Beetlejuice. Um, it's just, 
to me, it didn't, it didn't work. Um, but all in all, once this, once again, that did not stop me from the five stars. Like this movie is just too, too great that even those little teeny tiny things. And those to me were tiny, uh, didn't bother me enough to like knock it down at all. Like I really enjoyed this movie and I would definitely watch it again and again. Um, I would show it to people who hadn't seen it because it is fucking cute. So if you like cute little cartoons, animated movies, I'm not into animation myself, but um, that was that was great. Um, well worth it, um, honestly. And you know what the best part about this movie was? Honestly, the best, best, best part was the first five seconds or 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it is, for the uh, Walt Disney logo. And hearing that music, Oh, I just miss miss hearing that stuff. So every time I hear it, it just gives me goosebumps because it brings me back to a time in my life when I was a kid where things seem did seem very magical, like movies seemed magical. And this movie definitely had that like magic. And I could see if I were a kid back in 2000, uh, when was it, 12 or so, I would have, yeah, that was, I was 20, <laughs> wait, 30, it was 30 by then, Jesus. I was 30 then. Uh, if I had been, you know, uh, you know, 10, uh, then I would have, um, uh, re- you know, really, really, really uh, enjoyed this movie uh, in a different way, you know, or whatever. But um, I was, I was not. So um, I, I can say that I, I am very happy. I watched the movie. I, I suggest everybody else check it out if you haven't. If you have kids and they're into animated movies, this is cute. Uh, but it does have horror elements a little bit, like a little scary scenes that I think would frighten like the little little ones. But the ones that are like you know eight eight and up maybe or seven and up, you know, could probably handle it. Um, in fact, t- kids today they probably seen worse on TikTok. So I I would say you know. Eight, even five and up um might be able to handle it i don't know but it, it's a really fun movie and it's really exciting and and tim burton thank you for creating another movie in the library of films i'm probably going to say this i'm probably going to admit that it is by far one of my favorite tim burton films edward is still my favorite and beetlejuice is up there batman is up there this might be like a top five though right now so i mean good good job like creating something i really really enjoyed so um if you guys haven't checked it out go check it out it's on disney plus um if you don't have a subscription or whatever you can probably buy it online uh for like 10 bucks or so definitely worth it uh check it out and um i just i just love it i i can't wait to see more stuff like this so i know it's been like 10 years so uh, you know who knows But uh, thank you guys for checking this out and hope you guys have a good one. Bye.